and welcome. Happy Easter. On this beautiful and mysterious day, I welcome you to Union Church. Let us gather to worship the Risen One. I invite you to take the stone that was in your Lenten kit and hold it as we go through this Easter prayer and story. Those of you who have worshiped with us know that I often use stones as a symbol of support, foundation, distance, whatever the case may be. And some of you have told me in the past that you take these stones and put them in your garden. I invite you to keep that in mind as we go through today's prayer and story. God of grace and power, we have longed and prepared for this joyous day. On Ash Wednesday, we humbled ourselves before you. On Monday, Thursday, we relearn the new commandment to love one another. On Good Friday, after Jesus was crucified, he was laid in the tomb and the stone was rolled in front of the opening. This stone, a symbol of death and separation from God. Can you imagine what Jesus' followers were feeling? What have you felt as you've moved through Lent? What stone or stones have seemed to block you from the love of God? Sundays during Lent, are not part of the 40 days. They are little Easter's. On each of these Sundays, we have spoken of God's love, shown in covenants of our love shared in relationship with God, with each other, and all creation. Today, we roll away the stone. We find an empty tomb, a sure sign that things that keep us from knowing God's love from loving each other and all creation. Do not hold us. The garden blooms with hope. This stone has become part of the garden, planted with faith in new life. So please pray with me, repeating after me. Loving God, we rejoice in the risen power of love, hope, and new life. Make this rising real in our own lives. Let us be people of love, hope, and new life. Let us be people of joy. In Jesus' name, amen. And there will be an activity sheet online at unionslp.com to help you celebrate Easter. In our hand is our 
light the Paschal candle that represents the light of Christ in the world. The risen Christ lives today. We are witnesses to these things. We sing to God incarnate. May Christ's love burn within. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us bring to God this prayer of confession followed by a short silence. God of grace, despair, pain, and fear are part of life. Sometimes we let them guide us. Sometimes we let them hold us back from living your way, and we lose sight of your strong love. Help us be a brave and holy people, living beyond fear. Teach us to trust in your steadfast love. Amen. Hear these words of affirmation. This is the good news. God raised Jesus from death, turning sorrow into joy and despair into hope. And we say together, Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. John chapter 20 verses 1 through 18. 
early on the first day of the week, while it was not yet light, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter, reached the tomb first, and bending down to look in, saw the linen wrappings lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following after and went into the tomb. Peter saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. And the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing it to be the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried Jesus away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and exclaimed in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to God. But go to my sisters and brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father, mother, and your father, mother, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that Jesus had said these things to her. It's hard to imagine the wreckage of feelings flooding the men and women disciples at the foot of the cross where the embodiment of their hopes and dreams suffered and died. To compound their grief, the Jewish Sabbath, Saturday, postponed going to Jesus' tomb to prepare the body. So early on Sunday, Mary arrived. Feeling sluggish, numb, and foggy with grief, she must have been mortified to see an empty tomb. The disciples were mute with disbelief when they entered the place where only burial clothes remained. What could they have been thinking? The Romans have stooped to a new law. They must have taken the body of Jesus so followers couldn't even have the dignity to bury him and grieve. There's really nothing we can do now. All is lost. My favorite sarcastic and brilliant ELCA pastor and author, Nadia Boltzweber, said it this way, quote, Mary Magdalene stood there at the empty tomb that morning while her expectations of what was possible collided full force with the God of Abraham and Sarah. Her certainty that she knew how this whole Jesus thing was ending, slammed right up against 
the full force of God's suffering and redemptive love. And though it was nothing short of divine revelation in the flesh, Jesus still didn't look very impressive, not in the churchy Easter sense, end quote. Jesus as gardener just didn't quite compute for a grief-stricken and completely flummoxed Mary. Angels in white in the tomb and this guy out here, what's going on? Whether it was Jesus speaking her name or even her soul speaking loudly to her heart, somehow Jesus was there. In this impossible moment of recognition, Mary becomes the first disciple, the one who sees, understands, and proclaims that death does not have the last word. Once again, though it takes decades to work out the whole story, Jesus has turned everything about life and even death as we know it completely upside down. No longer would we be wondering if Jesus is like God, but what if God is like Jesus? It can be difficult minus a near-death experience, to come up with a new illustration that helps us capture Mary's experience and that of the disciples. Perhaps our experiences over the past year of pandemic, life in isolation are still too tender. But one experience could be the day after a really big storm. Patience Salgado took a photo of such an event, but perhaps not in the way you might imagine. Though it's called after the storm, there are no ambulances or fire trucks, no chainsaws, National Guard, people cutting things up and sifting through rubble or floating bodies or life vests, just a large table with chairs in the middle of a neighborhood street. Salgado describes what was happening when the photo was taken, quote, there is a weight when things are shifted, battered and blown around that must be balanced. A weight on the earth and in our souls. It seemed like the only perfect response was to gather, to draw close once again. To, so we set a, a long, beautiful table with linens and flowers right in the middle of the street and all the destruction, end quote. Now notice who was already seated at the table, children. Though they can be the last ones to arrive when dinner time is called, these children seem to understand the need to, to sit down. They're ready to bring balance back to their life. Let's get on with it. The adults, well, they're still a little anxious. They're kind of lingering or looking for who or what is missing from the table, all while commiserating with each other. What do you see? How would you respond after a storm? Why? When tragedy strikes, I want to make contact with my loved ones to see if they're okay. And we need, we need to talk to our friends. Talk it through what happened. We come together then to make sense of everything that had happened and then kind of make plans about how we're gonna move on. Like the families who set up a beautiful welcoming table in the street, the disciples needed each other to share the burden in order to restore balance. If we had never heard this story, the grief and the burdens of the world would continue to keep us out of balance. Our lives would be limited to perhaps a small group of friends, limited by our own meager courage to make the world a better place, and perhaps even limited by a sense of powerlessness to face injustice. 
Again, I quote from Nadia Boltz Weber. What if God is not who we thought? What if the most reliable way to know God is not through religion, not through a sin and punishment program, but through a person? What if the most reliable way to know God is to look at how God chose to reveal God's self in Jesus? Because that changes everything. If what we see in Jesus is God's own self revealed, then what we're dealing with here is a God who is ridiculously indiscriminate about choosing friends. A God who would rather die than be in the sin accounting business anymore. A God who would not lift a finger to condemn those who crucified him, but went to the depths of hell rather than be apart from even from his betrayers. A God unafraid to get God's hands dirty for the ones God loves. This is the God who rises to new, new life with dirt under God's fingernails, end quote. Whatever divine alchemy occurred in that empty tomb, the world and each of us have been profoundly changed. Even as we cling to the status quo for the illusion of balance, Easter Sunday falls on the anniversary of the assassination of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And the world is watching the Jer Derek Chauvin trial for the murder of George Floyd. COVID has killed millions of people worldwide and we have only ourselves to blame. Coronavirus has been linked to the dramatic worldwide loss of biodiversity and the exponential rate of extinction of a wide range of plants and animals. Our planet teeters on the edge of disaster while humanity fights among itself for a place at the table. It seems to be a, a perfect storm of catastrophes that have the potential to destroy us. And yet, and yet, because God lived and loved among us, holy balance is possible. Though we have so much to grieve and many reasons to be stuck there, Mary Magdalene was there to tell the story of our collision with the power of God. Because of this, we too have received the message of Jesus' ministry, life, and even death. A message that says, you've got this. Anything is possible with God. Love as Jesus loved. Push back against injustice as Jesus did. Stand up with your friends and allies with the power of love. Why? Because we have what we need to change the world. Thanks be to God. As we do each week, <clears throat> let us hold each other and the world in prayer. As our Lenten purple gives way to gold, hear our prayers for times of suffering in a world that is unjust for too many. May we live toward wholeness. As thorns give way to crowns, hear our prayers, O oh God, for oppression in our land by trade that is imbalanced. May we live towards liberation for all. As tombs give way to gardens, hear our prayers for worries that keep us from flourishing in your care. May we live towards shalom. As yesterday gives way to tomorrow, Hear our prayers for the future that holds too much uncertainty or loneliness. May we live toward your vision. Holy One, shine the light of your boundless and healing love on our friends and family 
and those in our faith community whom we hold close to our hearts. Shine the light of your love on the families of victims of mass shootings, on the people, the witnesses retelling their traumatic experience of witnessing the death of George Floyd, on people of color traumatized by oppressive racism, on people experiencing homelessness forced to live in tent cities, on the families of victims of COVID and those who've recovered, on Chris in hospice care, on Peggy receiving treatment for cancer, on Michael recovering from a broken leg, his mom Beverly being treated for cancer, on those who are homebound or in care, Faye and Lance, Bill and Shirley, Barbara, Dawn and Betty Jean, and all those we hold dear. Trusting that God knows the struggles and the pain of our humanness, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught as shown here, or as you know it. Our Creator who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now will you join me in this responsive passing of the peace. Christ, peace be with you. Christ, peace within you. Christ, peace behind you. Christ, peace before you. Christ, peace beside you. Christ, peace to lead you. Christ, peace to comfort and restore you. Christ, be with you and also with you.
take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for the many ways that you support the ministry of Union Church in these very unusual times. We appreciate all you do. If you'd like to make a contribution, please find the donate button on our website. May God bless you and keep you. May the risen Christ walk beside you and show you the way. May God walk behind you and support you to give you courage and endurance. And may spirit encircle you and empower you to be the change you want to see. Thanks be to God. Bye for now and happy Easter. <laughs>